Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today to Neosystems webinar, Beyond Cost Point 7, Upgrading to Cognos 10. Previously, we've done four webinars on Cost Point 7. First, we did one on the changes between Cost Point 6 and Cost Point 7. Then the next one, we did a deep dive into the security changes for Cost Point 7. More recently, we did one on the CIO's guide for upgrading to Cost Point 7. And then we followed it with the CFO's guide for upgrading to Cost Point 7. But today, we're going to focus on upgrading to Cognos 10. Our agenda today, we're going to do a brief introduction, and then we're going to look at the changes in the licensing from Cognos 8 to Cognos 10. We'll get into the new features, including active reports and collaborations. Then we'll take a look at timing and planning for your upgrade, including some of the technical considerations you should make before starting your upgrade to Cognos 10. We'll look at migrating from Dell Tech Performance Management to Cost Point Enterprise Reporting. We'll look at integrating with Cognos. And then we're going to open it up to your questions. But don't feel like you need to wait to the end to get into your questions. If you have a question during the webinar, just type it into the questions box. And that way, when we get to the end, we'll be able to get to your questions. Brief bit about Neosystems. At Neosystems, we're proud to say, Grow ahead, we've got your back office. At Neosystems, we offer strategic back office services, including accounting, HR, and IT. And consulting forms an umbrella over these services, including implementations, upgrades, business process reviews. And within our secure private cloud, we're currently hosting 400 companies with 23,000 employees. With me today, I've got Ryan Pastoric. Ryan's got over 15 years of experience with Impromptu and Cognos. He's been with Neosystems for six years now. Prior to that, he was with Dell Tech for seven years. And before that, he was an end user using Costpoint and Impromptu. As I mentioned, I'm Brian Giblin. I'm a product manager here at Neosystems. I develop new products and service offerings to meet your most pressing business challenges. I also roll up my sleeves and manage some Cost Point 7 hosting migrations. A little more about our experience at Neosystems. Neosystems is a Dell Tech Premier Partner. We're also an IBM Advanced Business Partner. Our consultants have completed hundreds of Cost Point and Cognos implementations. And our experience expands to the end users through our managed accounting services. We are one of the first Cost Point 7 beta customers go, program going back to three years ago to Q2 2010. We have completed Cost Point 7 upgrades with several in process, and one of our clients has been live on Cost Point 7 in our hosting environment for six months now. We have clients live on Cost Point 7 and Cost Point 7 and Cognos 10 in our infrastructure today. And we have Neosystems accountants using Cost Point 7 and Cognos 10 every day. So when it comes to the implementations and the upgrades, we do it how you would do it. We just have the advantage of doing it over and over and over again. Before I turn it over to Ryan, I want to do a quick poll so that we can get a better understanding of you, our audience. How familiar are you with Cognos 10? You're just hearing about it for the first time. You know a little bit, but you want more information. You're very familiar with it and looking to upgrade soon. You're already in the process of upgrading to Cognos 10. Or maybe you're already using Cognos 10 today. So if you'd work on completing that poll, you know, this gives a sense so that as Ryan is framing his discussion, making his comments, he can target them towards you, the audience. So Ryan, I hope this helps to shape your conversation. Looks like over half of them, they know a little bit, but not overly familiar with Cognos 10. Okay. So, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan Pastoric. All right. Thanks, Brian. Um, I got quite a bit to cover today. Yesterday in our practice session, I think I got a little long-winded, so I'm going to jump right into it. All right. So the first thing I want to cover today is the licensing changes since the Cognos 8 series of products. Uh, you're probably aware that as long as you have a maintenance agreement with Dell Tech, the software upgrade for Cognos is free. You don't have to pay for the new version of the software. 
But what you might not be aware of is that not all of the features available in Cognizant Center are free. Uh, there's a couple new licenses that have been built at license types. There are enhanced consumers, which is a step above your existing consumers, and advanced business authors, which is a, is a step above your current business authors. Um, you're going to need to upgrade some of your users if you want them to be able to utilize uh, some of these new features that I'll be showing you in a bit. Uh, but know that your existing professional authors and administrators, since all of your rights roll downhill, they, they're going to have rights to use all of these new features uh, right out of the gate. So maybe you want to take some time, uh, play around with the new features without investing the money to see if they're, they're worthwhile to you. Um, you know, let your professional authors and your administrators review it. And then if you like what you see, you can always come in and, and purchase some additional enhanced consumer licenses so they can consume that content. I can't seem to change slides. Okay, sorry. So let's get into the list of new features that we have. First of all, the free features. Um, these include improvements to the look and feel of the portal. Um, it's, it's just a little cleaner look than it was before, a little easier to navigate, but it's not so far different that you're going to have to retrain your users. Uh, it's still similar in you know, where you click to, to access things. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a cleaner environment. Um, there have been some improvements made in the report studio. Uh, makes uh, the life of your professional authors a lot easier. Um, these are, you know, they may seem little to people who don't use the professional author report studio light uh, search studio, but they really do help out a lot. Uh, things like instead of having to click on an item and then use the ancestry tree in order to find uh, the entire list. They have a little triangle you can click on it. It highlights the whole list. Uh, saves you 10 seconds right there. Uh, you can disable and re-enable re -enable multiple filters at one time. All kinds of little things like that that in and of itself is not worthy of an upgrade, but when you put it all together, it really does save a lot of time when you're doing your development. They've added some new chart options and formats in Cognos 10. By default, when you start a new report, it's still using the legacy charting. So if you want to play around and use some of the new chart options, make sure you go into the report options and you'll see an area that you can check a box that says, uh, use, I, I believe it's disable legacy charting is, is exactly what it's called. Um, but they've added a lot more flexibility in the charting, a lot more different types of charts. You can really fine-tune it now. I, I, I think in old versions it, it was lacking in this area, and people a lot of times would just export their data to Excel because you can make charts look a lot prettier. But now you really can do that grayscaling and, and rounded corners and shadowing and, and all of those uh, fine-tuning for presentation purposes that weren't available before. You can also access external data on the fly within Cognos 10. Uh, the thing I'd want to note on this is I, I consider this to be more of an individual user type of feature. I say that because what you do is in your report, you tell it to point out to an Excel file or a CSV file, and how you tell it to find that is just through you know browsing your hard drive or browsing your network, so C colon backslash my documents. Well, if the next person goes in and tries to run that report and that same file doesn't mm -hmm. live in that same area, the report's not going to run right. So it's a great feature for individual users who maybe need to integrate a, a small spreadsheet in with existing cost point data. Uh, but if you're looking for a system-wide solution for that, I still would lean towards doing it on your server as an additional ODBC connection that you model in your framework. Uh, but it is, it is a great new feature. Lifecycle Manager is a product that's been added to the suite. This product is used for assisting you in your upgrades. Uh, what you do with it is you point it to your old environment and your new environment, tell it which reports to run, feed it all the parameters that it needs to know at runtime, and then it'll go out and run both those reports and compare the results with each other to make sure that you're still getting the same thing. There's also some performance improvements with a dynamic query mode. Um, they've made similar types of enhancements in Framework Manager like they did in Report Studio that unless you're an administrator and, and in there every day working on it, um, you know, it's not worthy of listing the enhancements, but they've certainly made some improvements on, on that, that make that type of job a lot easier to do. 
And then in line with the improvements to the look and feel of the portal, they've also improved the server administration area. I, I, I feel it's easier to navigate um, cleaner, better information without having to you know, use as many clicks to get there. As for the stuff that's going to cost some money in order to get, you know, we're, we're looking at Cognos Workspace. And if you're familiar with Cognos Pen and you've maybe seen some demos from IBM, they used to call this Business Insight. But now they've come out with a new product called Cognos Insight. I think there was too many insights going on, so they've renamed this to Cognos Workspace. Um, they also have a Cognos Workspace Advanced for, for editing content, uh, Active Reports, Collaboration, and Cognos Mobile. These are all the types of new features that are going to require either professional author and above to your existing users, or you're going to need to upgrade some licenses in order to, to fully utilize all these capabilities. And I'll get into more details on each one of those. So let's look at the Cognos Workspace first. This, what you need to keep in mind is this is an integrated workspace. It's a flexible, free form area for you to build a dashboard. <clears throat> if, you've, if you've done portal pages in Cognos 8 before, you may have had that same headache I've had where you know you don't always want it to be one row or one column, two column, or three columns. You want to have you know the first row span the whole width and the second row be two columns and the third row to be three. And to do that you have to nest pages and side pages. It's it's really it really gets difficult to to manage and, and maintain and just keep track in your head where everything's coming from. But with Cognos Workspace you have a you have a free form page that you can just drag items into resize, move around, um, you know, you're not bound by those same restrictions that you are in portal pages. They've also added some new objects to be used within Cognos Workspace. You know, the one I mentioned by name and I have on the, on the slide here is the slide builders on dates. If, if you're looking at the screenshot, that's that top bar at the top. And, you know, with there, you can kind of drag that beginning thing in and the, and the end Drag the beginning to the right, the end to the left, um, pick whatever range you want. And because there are shared variables between the objects, as long as all of your individual charts on that page are pointing to that filter, as soon as you move that slider, it updates everything on the page. There are other types of shared variables that you can use. I know it's real small, but on the far left of the screenshot is a checkbox list. Um, you know, that could be a list of users or projects or organizations or accounts. Um, but whatever it is, you, you pick what you want to see, you hit update, and as long as you've pointed all of your different charts to that variable, everything on the page is going to change whenever you hit update. And the other, one of the most important parts about this is that you can reuse this content. So what you're doing is you're bringing individual report properties or report objects onto the workspace, and then you're able to move them around and, and do some manipulation. I could make a similar report in Report Studio right now, but if I wanted to reuse, let's say, you know, the revenue plan versus actual chart, which you see on the top right, in another report, I'd have to open up the first report, open up the second report, copy it from one to the other, and it's not as simple as that because first you need to copy the query before you can copy the, the report object. And if there's variables, you have to copy the variables. So you have to do everything in the right order. Um, it can get tricky. In here, what we're, what we're seeing on this screen is six individual reports.